Ah, oh, hello everybody, and are you ready to go flying with Ryanair 186 today? I am so glad to hear that because so am I. And Cheyenne, are you there? Cheyenne, wake up now because this is your flight that we're making today. And where? Well, Cheyenne is the name of the YouTuber who goes by Pro Aviation 737 Max PT2. Long name, but his name is actually Cheyenne according to his YouTube site. Anyway, he wrote me and he said, just very simply, next video idea, Birmingham to Dublin. Well, why not indeed? That sounds like a good route. And it's also a route that is well flown by Ryanair. Now, he did suggest doing it with Jet 2, but Jet 2 doesn't fly that route. So, I'm sorry, there's Aer Lingus. They do a direct flight, but Ryanair are the only ones other than Aer Lingus that will fly that route. So we will fly that route today following Ryanair flight 671, 671 or FR 671. Put that into FlightAware and it will bring up the history. Now, some of you will probably have not heard of Birmingham. Birmingham is a really big city of, oh, 1.2 million people live there now. And it's in the uh, West Midlands region of England. And it has, oh, a lot of Industrial Revolution era landmarks that speaks of its 18th century history as a manufacturing powerhouse. Let me show you some pictures of Birmingham. Because here we are, you can see that it's also home for a network of canals. Many of them radiate from Sherbourne Wharf and are now lined with some very trendy cafes and bars. And here is Birmingham Town Hall. Look at that. This was built right in the midst of the 18th century manufacturing boom. And here is... Birmingham city centre today. That's the bus station at the lower left. And that shiny thing on the right hand side, well here it is again. This is the striking Bullring shopping centre. So we're going to be flying from Birmingham in the West Midlands over to Dublin. And Dublin of course is it's got Guinness <laughs> and over 700 pubs in the city centre. Wow. Oh, my goodness me. Cheyenne, are you old enough? Should we try to do a pub crawl <laughs> in, in Dublin? I'm not sure that, oh, I could do it anymore. In my younger days, I might have tried or wanted to try, but at my age now, Ha! Just going to the kitchen and back is a big effort. <laughs> right, well, I've got some excellent scenery for today for the airports. Birmingham EGBB airport scenery is made by Gary at UK2000. UK2000. And Dublin EIDW scenery is made by MK Studios, MK Studios. Right, well, Cheyenne, if you're ready, 
then let's go into pre-flight and make ourselves a plan, shall we? All right, Cheyenne, here we are, and we're in Flight Aware, and we're looking at Ryanair Flight 671. Here you can see the designator right there, FR671. This one landed over a day ago. It left from Birmingham and it went to Dublin. And this particular flight left on time and arrived at 16 minutes early. Wow, that's quite good, isn't it, for Ryanair? Here's the route that they took. As you can see, here's Birmingham down over here. This is Wales here. This flew up over the top of the Wirral, just south of Liverpool, crossed over the Irish Sea, and then came in to land on, well, we'll be landing, if this is the same one, if it's the same runway, it'll be runway 28, I think. Now, I'm looking here at Flight Radar 24 to see what departure stand it was. This is, here you can see the greater city of Manchester, of uh, Birmingham, right here. Look at the size of that. It's a huge city. And over here is where the airport is located. Now, you can see where this previous flight departed from was from this stand right here. Now, if I zoom in, hopefully, 57 left. 57 left is that one right there. So we're going to try to park in exactly the same location as this. And zooming out, following the, the route, we'll pop over here to Dublin and see where it came in. Yep, pretty much uh, no surprise here. It came in on this particular satellite, which is pretty much all for Ryanair. And this particular one came in at 122. So we are going to try to follow the same route. Flight Aware doesn't give us the departure and arrival stands in England or Europe for that matter, but it does for the Americas, which is a very useful thing. But this is what I have to use to find out the stands. Right, here's Windy for Birmingham. Here you can see uh, in the West Country, there's Birmingham. It's currently nine degrees. <laughs> Wind is coming 260 degrees at 6 knots, varying 220 to 290. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. There's a few clouds at 1,800 feet. And temperature 9, dew point 6. So no problem with fog at the moment. The Q&H is 1006, just a little bit below standard barometric pressure but it's VFR and has been for the last little bit. So looking at the runways, then the likelihood is we'll be departing on this runway right here, which is runway 33. So if our departure is going to be one of these stands here, then we don't have too far to go to get down to the end of the runway for a departure, do we? Okay, let's go and have a look now at Dublin. We have some interesting uh, weather patterns over here, over the Irish Sea, but the wind is generally coming out the same. 230 degrees, 11 knots, a bit faster there varying 190 to 290, visibility 10 kilometers or more, clouds few at 900 feet, a little bit lower. There's some at 2200 feet, but here's the other part, look at that, cumulonimbus is in the area, and scattered at 10,000 feet, so we may be running into some interesting weather 
as we make our approach. Uh, te temperature is seven degrees. It's cooler there than at Birmingham. Q and H one zero zero four. Not much difference, but it's VFR and has been for the last little while. Looking at the runways, now this runway is the new runway and it is open, but the airport scenery that I've got does not show this as an active runway. So in all likelihood, we're going to be coming in on runway 28 left. That's, yep, 28 left, right here. So that'll be the one that we'll be coming in and then we will have to taxi up here to where Ryanair normally docks on this particular satellite right there. Right, let's go into sim brief. We are, of course, Ryanair and we are 186. And we are departing from EGBB and we're going to go to EIDW. And CC, I believe that is Manchester for our alternate. We'll look at that in a moment. Here's the airframe. By the way, the flight that we're following is also a 737-800. And its cruising altitude was 26,000 feet, so we'll be doing the same thing. It's showing a departure of 33 and arrival of 28. And we'll put in here 260 to match the same cruising altitude. We are full, of course, and we have one ton of champagne and caviar. Yes, indeed. Indeed, we do. Here's the route that we're following. This is the standard instrument departure that we'll be taking. And then this is the waypoint, the route, waypoint, the route, waypoint, route and the final waypoint, and the battery 3 X-ray is the approach that we'll be coming in. Route distance is 327 nautical miles. That is not what we want. We want to follow the route going to the north, don't we? All right, so let's have a look at that. Yep. Now that one we can handle. It still has 33 and 28, but this one now has a slightly different route. And this will, it's got the Love One mic departure and the Bagso 3 X-ray arrival. The route distance, this is better. 213 nautical miles. Now this one is going to match the route of the other one that went across the Irish Sea and came in. So we're going to be closer to that particular flight path. Okay, that's, that's good. All right, we'll go up here and we'll save the flight and then we'll generate the flight plan. And here's the summary. There's our origin, destination, the alternate. There's our flight level. Airtime is 47 minutes. There's our block fuel. Here is the, the routing. And there are no dispatcher remarks. Going down here, there we go. We are Ryanair 186. There is our flight cruising altitude and the that is our flight route today. EGCC Manchester and the information that we need for that should things go wrong. And sometimes they do. We'll need to know that we are cost index six. We'll need to know our average wind speed for our cruising altitude. There we go. 
5,667 kilograms of fuel. Uh, that's 5.7 metric tons, of which 2.7 metric tons are reserves and 2.3 metric tons is the trip and the taxi. No tankering recommended. And there is the full route that we'll be following, so I'll be putting this into the description box below the video so that you can follow it, Cheyenne, okay? Here is our descent information. We'll need to know the wind speed and direction at flight level 200, at 150, and at one flight level 100. That's 10,000 feet, 15,000 feet, and 20,000 feet. And here's the information for the wind aloft. Here you can, this is at flight level 240. This is 2,000 feet lower than where we'll be flying, but it does give a good indication of the wind direction. As you can see, it's headwinds, 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 headwinds. Well, one day I might just get a tailwind, you never know, but we'll handle it. We will handle it. And here is our vertical profile, departing from uh, Birmingham here, climbing up to top of climb. There's our climbing, there's our cruising altitude, and then all the way down to EIDW in Dublin. The dotted line here is the tropopause, and we are going to be just a little bit below that as we make our route, but the air should be stable enough at that altitude, uh, so no spillage of champagne will occur. We'll be absolutely smooth on our journey. Of course, it did warn that there were some cumulonimbus in this area down here coming into Dublin, so we'll better have all the glasses picked up before we encounter that. All right, let's go into Navigraph charts. Right here we are looking at Navigraph charts, so we click here on Import Flight, Import from Simbrief, and here we go. This is the one that we, and we click import and open. And there's the route. Departing here, as you can see from EGBB, which is Birmingham, going across the top, all the way over here. And then we have this little zigzag here uh, of an approach. The Flight plan called for a Luvu one mic departure, runway 33, so we have that information right here. Let's just have a quick look at that with the overlay. As you can see, depart out here, straightforward go to Luvum, easy peasy. And for our arrival, We'll be coming in, and here's where we need to have a look at this one. We'll be coming in on runway 28. So looking here, will be ILS runway 28 left pizza. So I'm going to pin that and add that to the route. So there's our arrival. We'll be using the, the pizza. <laughs> I love the name, <laughs> pizza. Anyway, and that will come straight in there to land right on uh, runway. As you can see here, zooming in on 28 left. So all of our runways are in there. So we're looking good on that. Let's have a look at the plate. There's ATIS 124.53 right here. There's the approaches. Tower is 118.6. 
localizer. We're going to need to put the localizer frequency in. We'll need 278 on our final approach course. We'll be descending to 2,500 feet at Maxev, it's calling here. Airport elevation is 243 feet. In a missed approach, climb straight ahead to Gannett at or below 3,000 feet, then turn right to DW34, which is here, and then make a beeline for the Dublin VOR, which is 114.9. We'll put that one in too. Transition level is set by ATC and transition altitude is 5,000 feet. Down here, the decision height is 50 feet. All right, we have our information, so we're all set to go. Right, let's go on into the cockpit and get ourselves ready. Ah, there you are, Cheyenne. Do come on in and take your seat. We're all set to go. And here we are at Birmingham Airport, right here. And it's the weather is not looking too bad at the minute, which is rather good. We are actually at stand 57, 57. Uh, that was available uh, in P3D and in the scenery, so that's what we've got. And the scenery, this scenery is made by Gary at UK2000. Let me show you what we've got here. This is really delightful scenery. Over here to the left you can see we've got a monarch parked right there, but look at the detail. We've got the detail of that food gate gourmet lorry there and then swinging around you can see the detail in the stands right in front of us very very good detail and there you can see it says we are at 57 five, seven. which is pretty much where the original flight that we are following departed from and over there to the right there's a looks like another monarch so this is the detail of this wonderful scenery by UK 2000 now I've got the uh, you can see the location right here on your right I've got the Navigraph charts I'm just zooming out so you can see the the full airport there and where we are in relationship to the city the city is actually behind us so zooming in now you can see where we are on that terminal apron pretty good this um, Navigraph charts 8 isn't it okay well, now that we're here, I've got the fuel in. We're all fueled up. I cleaned the windows. I kicked the tires. I vacuumed the carpet. But most importantly, I loaded a ton of champagne and caviar. <laughs> right. We turn on the battery. Check that we've got enough volts. Turn on the fuel pumps and then let's start the APU. Here you can see the low oil pressure light has come on. And in a moment the, uh, e ah there it is, there's the engine gas temperature gauge. It's starting to climb, warming up very nicely. This by the way is the start switch right here. It's a toggle switch off to the top push down to start and then release it and it comes back to the center. So once this gets going and it's starting to stabilize, I'm now going to look for this light to come on. And when it does, there it is. 
turn that on and now I have it set for APU generator so it's showing that we have 115 volts just what we need to program everything here now we've got the voltage I'm going to turn on the IRS to get the GPS started up turn on the galley you never know we may just get a cup of tea Cheyenne I hope so uh, emergency exit lights no smoking fasten seat belts over here I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat I'm going to leave the probes off for the moment I'm going to turn on the electrical hydraulic pumps and the light here that you can see is the forward service hatch and the equipment that's the service hatch that you can see on this picture on the left hand side and you can see the steps open down there as well and then over here I'm going to turn on the APU bleed the recirculating fans and then I'm going to turn on the packs and listen. There's that rush of heat going into the cabin. It is only 10 degrees out here today, so we need to warm up the cabin. And then I'm going to turn on the steady light, and then that completes the initial startup phase. Let's go ahead and program the FMC. First thing we do is we check that we've got the na uh, navigation data is in date and that there's no errors with the program. Press that and we'll put in the start position which is EGBB and then we put in gate 57. Let's see if 57 is in the database. It is. Look at that. And that is the exact database. So I'm going to put that into the temporary and then transfer it to that. Now the IRS and GPS system is aligned with our starting point. Now I'm going to go to root. And here we put in the origin, of course, is EGBB. And we're going to go to EIDW. EIDW. We are the infamous Ryanair, RYR, but we are still 186, even though we are following uh, flight 671, we are still 186. So now I go to the next page, and here's where we put in the information. So we First of all, we go direct to Lovem, L-U-V-U-M. Then we go direct to, to Nanti, N-A-N-T-I. And then we take the Yankee 5-3, so Yankee 5-3. And that will take us then to Wallace, which is W-A-L. And then we take the Lima 10, Lima 10 over here. And then we go to Penil, P-E-N-I-L. Then we take the Uniform Lima 28, Uniform Lima 28. And that will take us to Leldo, L-E-L-D-O. Go to the next page. Then we take the Mic 145. Mic 145. That will take us then to Bagso, B-A-G-S-O. And that is it. We activate that and execute. Now we go to fix, put in EIDW for our destination, and then I need to put a 4 mile circle around it, a 10 mile circle, and a 30 mile circle. Go over to descent, 
go to forecast. Transition level is set by ATC, so I'm going to leave that alone at the moment. But we do need to put in the information for three altitudes, 200, 150, 100. Q&H at our destination is 1004. And then the flight, uh, the speed and direction at flight level 200 is 266 at 42 at 150. It is 273 at 26, 273 at 26. And at 100, that's 10,000 feet, it is 259 at 24. 259 at 24. Good. Execute that. Go to departures and arrivals. Go to departures. I'm pretty sure we're going to be using 33, but first of all, let's tune in to Birmingham ATIS and see what they say. Now, Birmingham ATIS is 136.025. Birmingham Airport Information, Sierra 1318, Zulu, wind 241 at 5, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition 2700, scatter temperature 102.5, altimeter 1006, landing and departing runway 33. VFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back home short instruction. Advise controller on initial contact you have. Sierra. Right, we have Sierra. And it tells us that the local barometer is 1006. So I'm going to put 1006 in that. I'm also going to switch to radio. And I'm going to put in 50 over here for the decision height and it says that we're going to be leaving on 33 so I'm going to put 33 in there and it is the Love em One mic that we're going to be departing with so I'll put that in execute that go to departures and arrivals go to arrivals we are planning on coming in on ILS 28 left. So I'm going to put that in there. We'll be coming in on the Bagso 3X. That's this one. And it's the Pisa transition. Execute that. Now we go to legs. And here's where we check out the flight plan to see whether or not it's a good one. First of all, I'm going to switch this to mm -hmm. plan so that we can see it on here. And I'm going to go and step through each one of these. There's the departure. Now we're crossing over England, Wallasey, Pennell. Now we're starting to cross over the Irish Sea here. Coming down, there's the bag, so arrival. And coming into there, there's the first swing. <laughs> there's always a little bit of a zigzag there. There's the pizza. And Latmo coming in right on Maxa and coming into land right on runway 28 left. Here's the 10 mile circle that we put in. There's the 4 mile circle that we put in. And I'll just go out a little bit here so you can see how those circles go around the destination. So we've got a good flight plan. Everything is working out. All right, I'm going to go back to map. I'm going to put the weather radar on this. Double click and the dots appear for the uh, data. Now I'm going to turn on the TCAS and see if there's any 
information about any other aircraft in the vicinity and so far it's looking clear. So I'm going to go to 20 on my spacing there. Now over on yours I'm going to put terrain on yours and I'll put the data on too for yours. Alright, we're flying at 26,000 feet so I'm going to put 26,000 feet up in here which is our cruising altitude. Elevation is 243 feet at our destination so that comes out at close enough to 250. So this is for pressurization. All right, let's get our, ah, the passengers I can see are queuing up now to get on board. So it's time to get our clearance from uh, ATC. So we'll tune in to clearance at 121.92 and request IFR clearance. Clearance delivery, line at 186, ready to copy IFR clearance to Dublin International. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Bravo Alpha Golf Sierra Oscar Airport as 5 fly runway heading climb and maintain 9000 departure frequency S118.05 squat 7746 Line at 186 cleared to Bravo Alpha Golf Sierra Oscar Airport as filed fly runway heading climb and maintain 9000 departure on 118.05 score 7746 Ryanair 186 red back correct Contact ground on 121.8. All right, we'll contact ground in just a moment. I've got the 7746 squawk in there. We've been cleared to 9,000 feet on departure, running on runway heading. So that's what we'll put in. And according to the charts here, if you can follow me on this there you can see on runway 33 the compass is 326 so I'm going to put in 326 on this and I'll do 326 on the central heading I'll do yours too is that all right Cheyenne okay 326 for yours all right, good. Now I'm going to go back into the programming and we'll finish off the route by performing the initialization. Now I've got all the fuel on board, but we need 2,700 of reserve, that's 2.7, with 2,313 for the trip and taxi, that comes to 5,013 or 5. 5 is the nearest round figure, 5 tons. And as I said, it's 2.7 for reserves. Cost index is 6. Our cruise altitude is 260. The cruise wind, the average wind, is 266 at 34. 266 at 3.4. Transition altitude is 5,000 feet and double click this and it calculates everything. So execute that, go to N1 limit, we're going to take the 10 degrees, we're not going to do any derates, bumps or anything like that. Go to takeoff, we'll be using flaps 10 all I have to do now is double click this and it gives me the center of gravity and the trim wheel. Over here I push once, push once there, and once there, and it gives me V1, rotate, and V2, which is lift off. So I'm going to put 145 now into here. This is our lift off speed. Looks good. Flight director on, flight director on. V-NAV, L-NAV, and the green lights on both. Arm the throttle there. I'm going to arm the VOR1, VOR2, VOR1, VOR2. VOR1 is the localizer 
uh, 111.35, which is the localizer for runway 28 left at Dublin. And VOR2, that's my second navigation, that is the Dublin VOR at 114.9, in case we have to go around and do a missed approach. So everything is looking good so far. Okay, and now we'll get our, oh, everybody's on board, so I'll bring up the stairs and close the doors. That's the motor that you hear, that's the stairs retracting and being stowed away automatically underneath the forward hatch area. Okay, let's get our taxi clearance and we're going to then ask for a pushback in a moment. Birmingham ground, Ryanair 186 with uniform, ready to taxi, IFR. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 33, using taxiway, Victor Delta, Echo Sierra, contact tower on 118.3, when ready. Taxiing, hold short, runway 33, using taxiway, Victor Delta, Echo Sierra, Ryanair 186. Right, we have our taxi clearance. And... Everything is looking good, so we need to do our checklist now. We need the fuel is good, windows are locked, check, seatbelt signs are on, good, door lights are out, check, MCP is programmed and checked, takeoff thrust bugs are programmed in, the speed's done, CDU pre flight, rudder aileron trim, taxi takeoff briefing. Now, we will need to have our nose go to the right and our tail go to the left because we need to go out in that direction so now I'm going to put the anti-collision light on and if you're ready let's do the request of pushback and to start the engines you want to start number one or number two first uh, Cheyenne which one would you like number one or number two you like number two Good. All right. Well, I'm going to turn on the yaw damper. Flight continuity light goes out. And now I'm going to get the crew to give us the pushback. All set. All buckled in. Good. Then here we go. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Ready to push, tail to the left, parking brake's off. Parking brake is off. Brakes released. Right, I'm now turning the heat off and I'm going to get ready to start engine number two. So I'm doing this to engine number two to monitor. Brakes released, here we go. All right, and now starting engine number two. The start valve has opened. Here you can see the N2 is spinning up. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. Turning the RTO on there. Coming on. And there we go. Bringing in the fuel. Now I'm going to look for the engine gas temperature to rise. Oh, there it is. Look at the temperature. This is in Celsius, by the way. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go out next. It did. We're getting a good start. Everything is looking good. Should hear the engines any moment now. There they are. Right. And over here, I'm looking for 115 volts. There it is. Engine number two is started. The start valve has opened. Here you can see the N2 is spinning up. And that's looking good. As soon as this reaches 24, I'll bring in the fuel. Push back complete. Parking brake, please. Parking brake is on. Brake set. 
Now the gas temperature is rising very nicely, looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. There it is. All right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. Are they nice people down there? Really nice. Okay. Now I'm going to go to flaps 10. And I'm now looking for this red tick mark to go off. And once this, ah, oh good. Now we've got a balanced engine. So now I'm going to switch to the main engines for our power. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the heat again, but turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. That's how we start everything. Right, generators are on, check. Probe heat is now going on, left and right. Anti-ice, not required at the minute. Isolation valves correct, engine start levers idle, D10, flight deck door is closed and locked. Recall is checked, flight controls checked, flaps green light, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake is RTO, good, got that. Speed brake lever down, D10, ground equipment is all clear. So now we are ready to taxi, so I'm going to turn on the taxi lights. Attendance. Hang on, we're about to go trundling down the taxiway. And if you see on this chart to the right here, you'll see and be able to follow our route all the way. And I'm going to now center the maps onto that. Okay. Go down there, turn left and follow that down. Okay give a little bit of extra power to get ourselves unstuck. There's an Aer Lingus over there. There's another Ryanair. Oh, and there's a Tui. Monarch on the left. Very busy airport, this. And there's a Delta Airlines right there. How about that? Really very detailed. When I get up to the end here and turn left, I'm going to see if I can get a bit more of the airport. See if I can play tourist. Okay, here's the Well, there's the Delta to the left of us there, you can see that. And the terminal building is just coming into view. And there's a Chewy aircraft park there. And there's a few kamikazes floating around. There's a bus. Look at the detail. There's a 5E there. KLM. Wow. 
There's a lot of liveries here from around the world. Here's where we make our turn to the right. There's the big parking area of the terminal. And over here is where we make our turns. There's more buildings over there, a lot of detail. And you can see the weather. And the frame rate is 2021. Not bad at all, 2021 frame rate. So there is Birmingham Airport made by Gary at UK 2000. And we are going to swing around here and then go down to the end of the active runway. Very detailed airport scenery. It's a little gloomy, so the lights are on, so we'll have plenty of lighting. This is, after all, winter, so uh, not to expect some gloom at this time of year in England these days. It's a working radar spinning around at the top there. There we go, coming up on runway 33. This is for category 2 and 3 aircraft. And crossing the initial lines and coming up to the whole shore. the whole short line so I'll just stop here and let's contact the tower. Birmingham Tower, Ryanair 186 at runway 33 ready for takeoff IFR2 Golf Alpha Golf Sierra Oscar. Ryanair 186 cleared for takeoff runway 33. Cleared for takeoff runway 33 Ryanair 186. We are ready for takeoff so the briefing is we Go straight out and follow our plan. Engine bleeds are on, all lights are now on, start switches are going there, and now going to and starting the clock. Alright, all very tight, please. Let's make our way out onto the active. Nothing coming, we're all right. Okay, we're lined up. Engine's going to N1. And the power is good. Toga button push, full power. And we're rolling. The one rotate. Rotate. 
B2. B2. And there we go. Positive rate. Gear is up. Lights off, engines off. And right, I'm adjusting the map so you can follow our route here. And we're on climb out, everything's looking good. And going off, going to flaps five. And let's have a look. Here we are, looking over Birmingham. Well, we're starting to make our turn now. So there's the view of the southern part. And we're about to go into the clouds. We're still at plus eight, so we're okay for temperature. Climbing out, we're on our way. All right, Cheyenne, it's not a very long flight today, but we do have a meal specially prepared for you along with some champagne and caviar to wash it down with. And I'll give you a shout as soon as we get into our... As soon as we get into uh, the final pattern for landing at Dublin okay I'll give you a shout then see you in a little bit
Ah, uh, there you are, Cheyenne. Do come back on in and take your seat. Don't forget, let's buckle up. Did they give you enough to eat back there? Oh, good. And also to, to drink? Fantastic. Right, I better tell you where we are. We are coming over, we're just past Bagso, and we are within 30 miles of Dublin. So I'm going to see if I can contact and there's a tower 8281 at runway 2 8 ready for takeoff IFR2 Gibichino 81821 all short runway 2 8 traffic in Airbus 8321 on the runway Dublin Tower Line 18628 miles getting up clearance to land Line 186 Dublin Tower, make straight in runway 28, ultimate 1004. Make straight in runway 28, line 186. Hold short runway right, 28. we're going to be making in on runway 28. We still have to do that little bit of a googly, but um, I had to turn on the anti ice when we were on our descent because we were hitting a lot of cloud. Now, I don't know if you're aware of the geography, some of the others out there may not be, but to the south, the water that hits the southern part of the Irish Sea comes from the Gulf Stream, that's the Caribbean. And the water that comes from the north comes from the Arctic Circle. That is cold water hitting warm water and it sort of does that in the middle and as you know, if you've taken a bath, it produces steam when you get hot and cold mixing like that. And then it produces a lot of cloud, is what happens over here. We had minus 27 degrees Celsius, and we had to have the anti-ice on, otherwise that cloud, which is very heavy with water vapor, would have clogged up our engine. So, we're free now, so I've got the anti-ice off, and we are on our descent. So we're now turning towards Kogax, and I'm now going to go to Claps 2. I have the main lights are on, fasten seatbelt signs are on, and we are doing our descent very nicely. 247 and I have our final course set in we are now cleared to land on runway 28 it says that's going to be 28 left for us and we'll be coming up on pizza in just a moment so now I'm going to go to Flaps 5 and we're holding our speed everything is looking good I have auto brake 3 set on here and you can see that we're doing our little twisty googly bit Let's get our turn made into pizza. Everything is looking good. base 
to intercept the final and the localizer for runway 28. We are 22 DME miles from our destination. Busy out there in Dublin today. Well, we're coming up on Pisa, which is our initial approach fix. Then, when we get to Lapmo, we will be right then locking onto the localizer to make our final. Descent is good, looking good, fuel is good, main lights are on, right we're coming up on Five hundred feet is what we are needing at at max out. So we're on course. And somewhere out there will be the airport. I think I can see it. Going to one two one point eight Pacifica two seven zero four. This is a, a lot of traffic on this radio today. Dublin Tower, Pacifica six zero six two and one one two eight ready for takeoff. Right. Coming up on lap mode. Pacifica six zero six two. And then we'll be intercepting the localizer. I've just uh, zoomed in a little bit so you can see the route a little bit better on the charts here on your right. Here's some of that cloud that they were telling us about. Now I'm putting this to 378 which will be our final approach. Right, 
right, we're now turning on to the on to final and I have locked on to the localizer. Going through a bit of cloud here. When we get to the 10 mile line, I'll be going to flaps 10. cloud is obscuring the airport so don't have a visual yet right going to flaps 10 crosswind <laughs> what else is new with coming into Dublin where I can see the runway just right flaps down and gear down all right engine start switches on Crew secure for landing, all lights are on, we are secure, we're ready to land. And I have the runway in sight, we are too white, too red, and it's a crosswind. Ah. Okay, then let's just... ourselves up a little bit here auto brake is on right shall we do it why not I have control <laughs> as if and we're coming down the glide slope we have one white, three red. All lights are on. Everything is too white, too red. We're good. Oh, we do have some gusting. Five hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. And we're descending. Two hundred. Two hundred. Approaching minimums. One hundred. One hundred. Minimums. And we're landing. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. And butter landing. Nose down. Reverse thrusters are on.
and we'll turn here. Right, I'm going to stop here while we do the clean up, flaps up, and the auto brake is off, 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 off. Dublin Tower, orbit minor 534, and five, departure, runway 28. Orbit minor 534, hold short, runway 28. Traffic is Airbus A321 on the runway. Orbit minor 534, taxi into position and hold. Right, the are coming up. Flaps are in transit. Crew is released to go to work. APU has started. And now we're going to go down here to the Whiskey 2. We'll turn right here and make ourselves down the Sierra run to go to Whiskey 2. Okay. All right. Well, we didn't do too bad considering gusting and crosswind. I thought I, my landing was all right. I hadn't had anything to drink other than pop. Diet Cola. I always make a better landing when I'm drunk, you know. <laughs> uh, perhaps not. <laughs> well, here we are. This is Dublin Airport. This is made by MK Studios. MK Studios made this, Cheyenne. you can see some of the detail. The trees are really exquisite, the way that they've got all of the detail in the trees there. And there's the main airport terminal right there. Look at the detail. How good is that? Well, we're coming up on Whiskey 2, so I'm going to slow down a little bit here. See the Aer Lingus and everybody else there? And... Whiskey 2 is the next one here. There you can see there's an aircraft on final coming in. But a lot of detail went into making this. A lot of detail. I better pay attention to what I'm doing now, otherwise I'm going to crash into something. And we're going to go up to that pier that's all the way at the far end there. In fact, there's a couple of aircraft already parked against it. We're looking for stand... 122, 122. Two. If we if it's free and available, then we will have it. Right, 
I hope that you're able to follow everything on the on the screen here. Let me zoom in a bit more, give a bit more detail. Now I'm crossing over the diagonal runway here. This is 1634 runway, making sure nothing's coming. Yeah, we're clear. But that's terminal pier over there. That is the Ryanair pier. And you can see where we've got to go. We'll take the inner one. around here and then swing to the right and that will take us down and we'll need to look for one two two This is one, two, one. One, two, two. Wouldn't you believe it? One, two, two is occupied with that world travel. So we will take one, two, one then. down. Right, stairs and doors are opening. Seatbelt signs are off. Cass is off. Frequencies are good. Parking break in. Everything is off. Our self loading cargo is unloading itself. And, oh, wow, that's a kamikaze bus. Right, everything is set. So, fuel off, APU off, battery off, and shutdown is complete. And we made it on time. Look at this. Look at this for detail. Here we are, and you can see there's a, a Ryanair tank, a uh, fuel tanking. But look at the detail. Even the wheels on the baggage carts. And then you can see all the way through the glass on the waiting rooms there. And here you can see where the passengers will go into. And yes, 122 was occupied by this world travel. Wouldn't you believe it? But we are at 121. So we did all right. We did all right. And the weather is calming down a little bit, so we're okay. Welcome to Dublin. 
I hope that you enjoyed the flight, Cheyenne. It was a good flight. It was smooth enough up at the top until we started our descent and started to go through those clouds because there is turbulence in clouds and we were going at 250 knots. Look at these buses. They go crashing through everything. Anyway, they didn't crash into us, which is always a positive thing. I hope that you liked what we did. We made a nice landing at Dublin, better than the last one. The last one I had to make here in Dublin, the gusts were so bad. I mean, I came in on one wheel first and then the other wheel. It was really, really bad. It was a 20 knot crosswind. Wasn't so bad today, but it was still bad enough. But we, we made it and it was a butter landing. It was a butter landing. So I'm rather proud of that. So do enjoy yourself while you're in Dublin. There's lots of things to see and lots of places to go, even if you are not interested in a pub crawl of 700 pubs. There's plenty of other things to see. Great history there. Right. Thank you for the suggestion. I do appreciate it very much. And I will see you again on another flight. And everyone else, I'll see you again next week on another flight of Ryanair 186. Okay? Bye, everybody.